good morning. It's up here in the Catalina Mountains, outside of Tucson, Jason Lee Taco. Been up here, been in Tucson for a number of days now, doing some painting. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, or at least the like button, you don't have to subscribe, but that's up to you. But I'm doing this uh, interesting formation here. I painted these rocks yesterday, I was not able to record it because it's pretty windy yesterday, but um, I'm gonna be moving things around a little bit to make this seem more interesting. Gotta move fast with this block in because one absolutely glorious thing that I've learned about this uh, area here, the Southern Arizona is that, boy, the sun, it's very generous with sunlight. not a lot in the way of cloud cover. We did get some clouds one day in the afternoon. But otherwise, it's been glorious sun ever since. But, of course, the sun always continues its relentless path across the sky. And it really affects rocks big time when you're painting rocks and things like that. So you have to work quick. So I'm after the shadows. I'm trying, I'm working on a uh, oil primed piece of linen that's been toned with yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is bone dry. I should switch to a bigger brush. But it's bone dry yellow ochre. Uh, yellow ochre. I use uh, Windsor Newton Griffin, which is a quick dry alkyd paint, which is basically just quick dry oil paint. And I toned these about a week and a half before I hopped on the plane so that I know they would be uh, very dry and cured for this. Uh, for this trip. So my dark is dark. There is a really intense dark. All right. Gonna have the rock here. Right about in there. I'll, I'll say. But notice um, this interesting abstract pattern of dark. And if you can find an abstract pattern like this in a senior painting, then go for it by all means, because you're probably going to end up with a winner. Okay, I have that in. Let's get in my strongest greens. By the way, I don't think I told you colors on my palette. Titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, orange permanent. Probably won't use that. That was left over from, over from last night. Yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, Venetian red, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson permanent, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, viridian. That's an alkyd. That's an alkyd too, and that's an alkyd. 
and that is an alkyd. And then we have um, sap green. Alkyd, once again, is just a quick drying oil. I like to use those um, on painting trips like this. I flew down here especially and that way I know my paint will be uh, dry for the trip home. Mostly dry. My mo most recent paintings like this one today may not be completely dry but my other ones are. Most of my other ones. And it makes it easier just for transportation and especially if the Transportation Security Administration decides to uh, want to go through my stuff and make sure that I'm all good and clean and I don't have to worry about them wrecking my paintings. So we're just after approximates right now of color and value. But like I said, gotta work quick because that sun is gonna move. Just in case you're wondering, you know, why aren't it, why am I not using all alkyd colors? I could, but um, there are some colors that just dry slower than others. Titanium white is one of them. And because titanium white ends up in a majority of my color mixtures, it made sense to, uh, Use an alkyd for that instead. So at this stage, colors and values, lock in and approximates. Basically just, and what I see, and what I, in what I'm seeing is it uh, warm, cool, light, or dark. It's mostly what I'm after. Oh, one other color I did not put on my palette that I like to use, pardon me while I dig this out, is Gamblin's Portland Grey Warm. I rarely ever use it in the studio, but I love to use it out plinter painting, especially out in the west here, because it's an automatic push your colors back. Works great for these uh, more distant scenes.
keep it thin right now. This is not gonna change much here. This will change much and this will change a lot in the foreground. So with our general block in done, whatever has sunlight on it already, because the sun, this scene, um, I'm looking mostly north, a little bit northeast. So the sun's gonna swing around and it's gonna start to illuminate all of this shadow and make it lighter. You know, illuminate what's in there and I'm gonna lose that shadow. So if I'm gonna work on something, I'm gonna work on the part that changes the quickest. This is not gonna change much. This, all the stuff on the left side of the painting is gonna stay fairly static. It's the right side of the painting I need to worry about. So let's tackle that. I'm gonna make this rock bigger than what it is because that's kind of one of the main things I wanted here was that rock. I fear my uh, canvas keeps tilting. in front like that we have another shadow that goes just like this Thank you. 
Okay, before it changes too much, I want to get a little bit of what's going on back in here. So what can happen is you start to uh, zero in on some of this detail work, which is fine. But you get too much involved in that, and then all of a sudden this is all in light. And then you're like, what the heck was that back there? And of course, you can go home and rely on a photograph, but photos lie to you. And I'd rather, I'd rather rely on the photograph for detail than rely on it for you know, how far away was this compared to that? What was the color and temperature differences? That's where the photo's gonna fail. That's where people, um, people usually mess up in plein air painting. There's some really neat shapes in here. It'd be nice to get these in. Do an upside down test on that. Okay, there's some really dark darks. in the crevices of these rocks. I'm gonna go get a little bit of detail work in. Not detail for the sake of detail, but detail for the sake of being able to gauge my colors and values more correctly.
Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here for the YouTube public. If you want to see the rest of this, uh, consider joining my Patreon site. $5 a month, no commercial interruptions. You can watch me finish this. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and have a great day.